Hey everybody, we're going to get started in about one minute. I'm going to give a few people just uh, uh, one more minute to get on here. See some more people dialing in. All right, since it's 11.01, we're going to go ahead and get started. I just wanted to thank everybody um, for spending a little bit of time with us today, and I'm really looking forward to going over our five credit myths and just a few things about Credit Law Center and what makes us different than other credit repair companies. So um, if you can see my screen here, and, and I just wanted to let you guys know too, if you guys have any questions whatsoever, um, feel free to go ahead and type up questions. Um, I have Brianna on standby, and she can go ahead and answer those for you. And then also, at the end of the webinar, um, if you have additional questions, feel free to reach out to your credit advisor, and um, they can go ahead and discuss in further detail with you um, if you have uh, more questions uh, that you want answered. So, um, and then if you don't have a credit advisor assigned to you, please reach out to myself, uh, and my email address is Jana, J-A-N-N-A, -A, the letter S for Fox, at Credit Law center.com and I will get you assigned your own credit analyst so that would be your go-to person at Credit Law Center that you can send um, any of your clients over to if you just need advice or them to look over a credit report or anything like that that's going to be your go-to person all right so we will go ahead and dive right in if you can see on your screen here um, I have our uh, our web page up and we worked really hard to um, revamp this and kind of get it up to date and a little more user friendly. So I wanted to make sure that you guys all were aware of that. And if you look on here, it just has a lot of great information on it, um, you know, for your clients and even for yourself. And then we have this menu button here up top and then where he says meet our team. Feel free to always go on there here and then you can just kind of get to know your credit analyst a little bit better. Um, we have bios on there, and then you can even refer, refer um, clients with that, too. So there's that. So I wanted to make sure that you guys were aware of that. And then we're going to dive right in. We have some trifolds that actually has this information um, on it here. But first of all, what I want to do is I want to explain the difference in Credit Law Center and other credit repair companies. Now, one of the big differences is that we're actually a law firm. So we're not just a credit repair company. And if you look here on this screen right here, it's what a consumer can do for themselves versus a credit repair company, which a consumer can actually ironically do more than a credit repair company can, and then a law, uh, what a law firm can do. So one of the biggest reasons why we're as successful as we are is because we are actually a law firm. We don't just have the word law in our name, and we don't just partner with an attorney somewhere. We actually have attorneys in-house. If you look in that menu screen again where it says meet the team, you can actually see them on there. So we can get things done that other credit repair companies cannot. Another reason why uh, we're much different than other credit repair companies is because we don't put our clients on a monthly payment plan regardless if something happens or not. With Credit Law Center, we only charge for items removed from the credit report. So it's a free consultation, it's free advice. Um, we talk to people all the time. We can even tell people what to do on their own. And if they can do it on their own, we advise them to do that. So we don't charge them for that. So we only charge for what we're able to remove from a credit report. So let's say I go after 25 collections and only remove 15. We're only going to charge for the 15 we removed, not the 25 we went after. So there's little, little to no risk for you to refer us out to your clients. We don't guarantee results, but we guarantee we're not going to charge them unless they get results. Okay. The other thing that makes a big difference with us is our turnaround time is very quick. We can usually get people in and out of the process anywhere between 80 to 120 days. Now, the shortest amount of time it would take us to get something cleaned up is about 40 to 45. 
and that's just because of mail time. Um, the bureaus do have 30 days to respond to us by mail. So the shortest amount of time would be 40 to 45 days, like I said. And then anytime it takes a little longer than that um, 120 day mark is if they need to establish credit or for some reason if the client is kind of slowing down the process. We partner with our partners. So we want to make sure that the people that you refer over to us, we get back to you so they can actually close on a loan. So we want to get it done quick and we want to get them back to you. It's very important when you refer clients over to us that we know it actually came from you because we want you to be able to, of course, close on that loan. So when you send in a referral, the referrals over, the best thing to do is um, get a hold of your credit advisor if you haven't already and make sure that you have their referral link. What that does is that's going to connect that client with the credit advisor so that you know that they got a hold of the client and the client knows who they need to be speaking to and we know that it goes to you. Because at the end of the day, what you want to do is you want to be able to close on loans. So we want to make sure that we get them back to you. Now we're going to go ahead and dive right on in to the five credit myths. Now these are common misconceptions in the marketplace. So you'll find these with consumers, with real estate agents, and with loan officers. One of my jobs at Credit Law Center is to go around and educate real estate agents and loan officers on how to find and spot out those mistakes on credit reports that's keeping your clients from being able to move forward with the home loan. All right, so I'm going to teach that to you today. Um, and then hopefully you'll find that uh, when you look at these credit reports, you can see it a lot quicker and you know what you need to do with that client. So we'll go ahead and get started here. So myth number five is you only have one credit score. The fact is that different lenders may use different versions or weights in your FICO score. And there are currently, and this says 43, but this was made about two years ago, there's actually 56 different versions of FICO. So I'm gonna explain what that means really quick. The um, credit scores that consumers or even yourself find online, if you were looking at, let's say, Credit Karma or Identity IQ or Credit Check Total, those are not actual FICO scores. A lot of consumers or customers out there in the street, they don't understand that. They think that the score that they're looking at is their actual FICO scores. These scores are called advantage scores or consumer scores. They tend to be much higher than what an actual FICO score is going to be. Now, they usually will start out at a different, um, they have different uh, starting levels. So they, they might start out at a 500 and end at 1,000. And actual FICO scores start out at a 350 and end at an 850. So that's one of the reasons why it's a little different. You kind of look at it like a marketing ploy, if you will. If you look at like Credit Karma or any of the other credit monitoring companies, they're usually advertising some different type of, you know, maybe a credit card or some type of different loan. Now, if someone's scores are higher than what they thought they were, so let's say they thought they were like a 600, and then they look up on Credit Karma and they're like, oh my gosh, I'm a 680, they're going to be more apt to apply and buy things. So it's kind of a marketing ploy. Um, but what they are good for is they're good to see what's positive and what's negative on your credit report. And in fact, when we have our clients going through the credit repair process, we do have them sign up for a credit monitoring so that we're not actually getting a hard hit on their credit every 40 days when we finish our rounds. But we can monitor what's going on. Are they getting the credit cards that we ask them to get? Are they establishing credit? Are they paying their credit cards down? So on and so forth. Are the items that we're going after, we're actually getting removed. But we're very clear to the clients, do not pay attention to that score because that is not your FICO scores. Now, within FICO, having that 56 different versions, so our loan officers are going to be using FICO version 4, all right? They weigh things very heavily. So if you have any negative items or if you have any high balances on your credit cards, it's going to weigh a little more heavily than what the other versions will. Most uh, credit cards and um, car dealerships are going to be using FICO version 9, and they don't weigh things as heavily, so they have a tendency to have a little higher score. So if you guys have any questions about that, and I know a lot of times our poor loan officers get beat up because someone looks at their scores online, thinks they're looking at a FICO score, and then is frustrated when their score is lower when they actually pull a FICO. So that's the reason, that's what's going on there. Myth number four is keeping your credit card balances at 50% will improve your credit scores. I know this is a lot of times the advice that we're giving people. Keep your credit card balances at 50%. Or even we'll hear people say, keep your credit card balances at 30%. Well, if you're trying to get the most points possible, and, and that's normally what we're trying to do before we get a loan, this isn't actually the best advice. So the fact is, is that with your credit card balances versus the limit, 
If your credit card balance is zero to 10%, you're grading it an A. If it's 10 to 30%, you're grading it a B. 30 to 50%, you're grading it a C. 50% and above, you're grading it a D. And any late payments in the last 24 months, you're grading it an F. So really what a FICO score truly is, it's grading you on how likely you are to default in a loan in the next 24 months. So when you're advising your clients, what you want to do is you want to get them to pay those credit card balances as low as possible in order for them to get the most points possible. So the sweet spot there is, if you can see right here, is like a zero to 10 percent. Now, I'm not saying that people always have to keep their credit card balances at that this mark right here. But what I'm saying is, is to get the most points possible, get them to pay those credit card balances down. Now, if they're a little bit cash poor, another thing that they can do is contact the credit card company and raise their limits because you want a really good gap between that balance and the limit. All right, so that's gonna actually be the good advice. If you're advising people about to stay in that 30 to 50%, it's almost like you're telling your little kid, hey, Johnny, it's okay to get to C on that science test. So in order to get the most points possible, let's get those credit card balances paid down, all right? Myth number three is closing your credit cards will help your credit scores. This is absolutely false. A lot of people have an idea that payment history makes up the majority of their FICO score. Well, if you look right here on the FICO pie, if you will, 35% is payment history. The amount owed is 30%. New lines of credit is 10% of your FICO score. So what this means is when someone gets a new trade line, their scores are actually going to dip down by about 10%. It's going to take about 90 days to kind of start moving back up, six months to really start improving, and 12 months to truly start helping the FICO score. So that's that 10%. The length of credit history is 15%, and types of credit used is 10%. It's very important that people have a good mix of credit. They don't want just credit cards or just installment loans. And of course, as we know, what an installment loan is, is gonna be an auto loan, home loan, or personal loan. So if you only have credit cards or you only have installment loans, your score is gonna be about 10% lower than what they could be. So you want a good mix. I like to advise people to have four lines of credit four trade lines, two credit cards, and two installment loans. If they're a first-time home buyer, it's a, acceptable, obviously, to have one installment loan and two credit cards, and then that home's gonna be that fourth. And that's really what gives you a good fit credit profile. Now, what happens is, is when someone gets an offer in the mail that says, let's say, 0% interest for the next six months, that might make sense for their pocketbook, but as far as their FICA scores, it's not always a great idea. What happens is a lot of times these credit card companies, they know how much you owe on your other credit card. So let's say you have a $4,500 limit on your credit or balance on your credit card. They send you an offer for a $5,000 credit card. You transfer the balance over. So now what you have is you have a brand new line of credit, which dips your score down, remember, by 10%. The amount owed, now most likely what you have is you have a brand new card that's maxed out. You don't have a very long credit history with that card, obviously. So that's not the best way to go if you're going in to apply for a loan. So you want to make sure that your clients and even yourself know that you want to have good thick credit history. You don't want to go and transfer a balance over, get a brand new card anywhere between six months to 12 months before you're intending on getting a loan. Okay, so that's just good advice for yourself and for your clients. Myth number two is paying a collection will help your credit scores. So common sense would tell you if you have a collection on a credit report, then it would be a good thing if you go and you pay it off. So, and then you're gonna take care of it. Well, unfortunately, the fact is that paying an old collection will update the date of last activity and date reported. And there's less than a 2% difference whether a collection is paid or unpaid. Most weight is given to how recent the activity. So let's say I go in and I have a three-year-old um, bill from going to the emergency room and it's on my credit report. And then now I'm looking to go purchase a home. So I think, well, let me go ahead and take care of that collection. I go and pay it off today. What's going to happen is it's going to show up as a paid collection rather than a collection. And now my scores are going to drop because now that three-year-old collection has just changed the last date of activity and the date that I paid. So let's say I paid it today. Now that's showing up. I've seen this happen. Uh, and when I used to work on the floor, I say on the floor, when I used to work with clients, I had a client that had sold her house in Kansas City and was moving to Chicago. She needed to get a jumbo loan. If you know anything about jumbo loans, your scores are extremely important. You need high scores. So she had a few things that we needed to take care of on her credit report. The main thing was paying down her um, credit card balances. They were extremely high. And then she had a few collections. So I was going through it with her. 
and there was an $86 medical collection on there. And she said, do you see that $86 medical collection? I'm just going to go ahead and pay it off. I said, don't do that. If you pay that medical collection off, it's going to change the last date of activity, and you're, you actually have the possibility of lowering your scores. Well, in her mind, it didn't make sense. She just wanted to pay it and get taken care of because it was only $86. We have to understand it doesn't matter if a collection is $2 or $20,000. It's, it's about that date. It's all about that date. So anyway, we signed her up. I let her know, do not pay that off. I explained it several times. When we got off the phone, I know human beings well enough. I just kind of had a hunch. So I sent her over an email. We went over, you know, what we were going to do. You know, it was so nice to talk to you. I'm looking forward to working with you. Get those credit card balances paid down. I gave her a dollar amount. And then I said, do not pay the $86 medical collection off. Okay, so very clear. Well, 40 days later, as her round comes up, and you have to understand, we onboard anywhere between 500 to 700 new clients every month. So when I got her results back, to be honest with you, I, I didn't remember who she was. But I did know that I had a client that their scores dropped over 100 points. So I was going through the results trying to figure out what was going on. She paid down her collection or her credit card balances like I had requested. We were able to remove the collections. And then I get to the last page and guess what was paid off? That $86 medical collection I asked her not to do. So what happened with that is it changed the last date of activity and it actually lowered her scores. So that happens. In real life, that happens. If someone is going and paying a collection off, it's going to change the last date of activity and the likelihood of their scores going down is very great. Myth number one is credit reports are accurate. Now, normally if I'm speaking um, in front of people, I'll have people guess out. So I'll say, what do you think the percentages of credit reports that contain errors? And I hear everything from 20%, 10%, 90%. Well, the fact is 79% of all credit reports contain errors, 79%. So which means that out of all your clients that you work with every month, Every year, 79% of them have errors on their credit report. There's no other industry in the world that could get by with having mistakes 79% of the time, other than maybe the IRS and weathermen. So that's a terrible number, 79%, all right? And this isn't from Credit Law Center. That, that's not our number that we came up with. We're going to go through uh, a few facts published by the CFPB, and then we'll discuss a little bit um, further on why there's so many mistakes and what I'm talking about when I say mistakes on credit reports. So these are facts about collections, and this is published by the CFPB. 31.6 31 of all credit reports have one or more collection on their credit report. 67.5 of all collections result from unpaid bills rather than unpaid loans. Over half are medical. The median unpaid non-medical collection trade line is $366. The median unpaid medical collection is only $207. In a 5% sample of credit reports, approximately 1,400 different collection agencies were identified. Recent studies reveal that 80% of medical bills contain errors, according to the Vice President of Medical Billing Advocates of America. So 80% of medical bills contain errors, and that's even before they get to the credit report. What happens is most of the time when you go into the emergency room or doctor's offices, they're not equipped with their own billing department, so they'll kick that out to a collection company within 30 days. It typically takes insurance about th three months to six months to pay that off. So what happens is they show up with a, in 30 days, they have a collection on their credit report for medical, and then they go and insurance will pay it off, so now they have a paid collection on the credit report. So you can see that the consumer is really set up to fail from the very get-go. So, and then even with medical um, bills themselves, 80% having errors on them, that's absolutely atrocious. Now, one of the reasons why in here, I'm going to go back over here real quick. One of the reasons why there's so many mistakes on credit reports is the way they gather the information for the consumer. So it's almost like they're fishing with a fishing net rather than a fishing pole. So they pull the zip code first, last name, first initial, and only seven out of the nine social security digits. Truth be known, you don't even really need a social security number in order to pull a credit report. So let's say you live in a large zip code area, like I live in Kansas City. Let's say my last name's Smith, my first initial is S. The likelihood of crossover is very great. Or we you have family situations, like even in my own personal family, my grandfather, my dad, my brother, and my nephew all have the exact same name. My dad and my brother have the exact same birth date, right? My family lives within a four-block radius of each other. I'm the, I'm the only one who doesn't live in that area. 
So all of them live next to each other and I have seven siblings. So we, have a, we also have a lot of the same initials. So the crossover is very, very great as you can see. You have that um, happen when you have juniors and seniors, things like that. Also now, because there's so many remarriages, you'll have situations where someone takes on her husband's last name. She may have the same initial as the ex-wife. Let's say they still live in the same zip code or even the same house. The crossover is very great. So that's one of the reasons why there's so many mistakes. The other is the way the collection companies and credit bureaus actually report things on a credit report. Now, this is a thing that just absolutely um, infuriated me when I first learned this. I had a very um, negative idea in my head about credit repair companies uh, before I knew about Credit Law Center. I felt like they were kind of ambulance chasers, if you will, and I didn't really think that they could do much. And I wasn't really that far off. But when I learned this and realized the difference in Credit Law Center because we're a law firm and then the mistakes that are actually on credit reports, I want to go out and save the world from collection companies and credit bureaus. So, um, so I'm going to show you today what I'm talking about. So what I mean when I say the collection companies and the credit report bureaus report things inaccurately. So what we have right here is we have Millennium Financial. That is a collection company. Okay, it says collection services. There's nothing in the last date of activity. So by law, credit reports have to be timely, accurate, and verifiable. So in this right here, if this collection is going to be on a credit report for seven and a half years, there's no date to get it going. There's nothing to begin and end it. There's nothing in the last date of activity. Then here's the big doozy. It says collection attorney, as you can see, but I want you to look and see what that word is in the red rectangle. It says installment. And then it says it's passed you by $370. So what you're looking at here is this is coded as if it's an installment loan which an installment loan, as you remember, is either a home, auto, personal loan. So this is stating, Millennium Financial is stating, that this collection is an installment loan that's currently past due by $370. This is not. This is a collection. We all know what a late installment loan does to someone's credit report. It's not good. You should be able to heal from a collection. But what's happening is with this being coded as an installment loan, month after month after month after month, this is showing as if they have an installment loan past due. We'll go to the next one here, Primary Financial Services. This is a collection company, again. This was originally with ADT. If you know what ADT is, it's home security. They do not loan money, and I doubt they ever will. There's nothing in the last stage of activity. And again, we see that word on there, installment, past due by $160. What's happening, folks, is this looks like this particular consumer has two installment loans that are currently past due. They do not. They have two collections. Again, you should be able to heal from a collection. So this would be like me going out in my driveway and falling down and skinning my knee. It's gonna hurt for a while, it's gonna be a wound, guaranteed. And then after a month, you know, it's kind of scabbed over, it's getting a little bit better. After six months, it's doing good. After 12 months, I would have to point it out to you and show you where it was. What's happening here is this is like I fell down in my driveway and someone's coming behind me and shoving me down every single month. Every single month, I'm unable to heal from that. Now I'm going to show you what a collection should look like. This is LHR Incorporated, which is a collection company. Now there isn't anything in the last date of activity, as you can see here, but it's so difficult to find two collections in a row that's reported correctly. We went ahead and used this slide. But again, it's, it says collection and it says open, so that's a good thing. And there's nothing in the past due. That's how it should look. This is how a collection should read and look. The one below it, Midland Funding. There is something actually in the last date of activity, goodness, thank goodness, and then it says open collection and there's nothing in the past due. So what I want you to do is when you're looking through a credit report and they have collections, I want you to make sure if you see something in the past due, that's a red flag to you or an indication that that is being reported in error. Sometimes they have um, I-9 rather than actually the word installment. You want to look for that as well. So it's, it's not an installment loan when it's a collection like this, okay? It needs to read what it does right here. You can heal from this. You should be able to heal from this after about 24 months. The way that they're showing it before, they're not healing from it, and it's re-aging, re-aging, re-aging. Now, one of the reasons why the collection companies do it that way is because it costs them less money to report as if it's an installment loan. Past due. So it costs them less money. It also causes the consumer more damage to their scores, so they feel like they're more likely to get their money. It's very unethical, all right? So that's what we go in and we fight them about. So we would go back here 
to this other company and we'd say, okay, Millennium Financial, you're reporting as if this is an installment loan that's passed you by $370. This is not. This is a collection. By law, credit reports have to be timely, accurate, and verifiable. And when they are not, we fight them. So because we're a law firm, we have more bang to our punch. So what is a consumer going to really honestly do, or what's a credit repair on, honestly going to do? Blow a whistle? Say, hey, this isn't fair. So what we do is we actually go in there, and because we have that law piece, they know that we're not joking around, and we can do something about it. We've sued all three credit bureaus and several different collection companies for this type of activity right here. Okay, so now I'm going to go over really quickly um, a few of the credit reports, just so you see the different styles of credit reports, but how often this truly happens. This poor consumer here has eight collections. One out of the eight is being reported the way it should. So I'm going to go through this fairly fast, but if you look in here really quick. So we have installment loan past due $459, installment loan past due $375, installment loan past due $345, installment loan past due $149. Installment loan passed due 100. Installment loan passed due 100. Installment loan passed due 85. Look at that. This consumer looks like they have seven installment loans passed due. Seven. What do you think that's doing to their FICO scores? All right. And if you look on these, the majority of these are medical. The top two are not. It's with Sprint and um, Comcast, which is cable, but the rest of them are medical. So this is a situation like, let's say, a lady goes in and has a baby, and then she ends up with tons of collections on a credit report, but what it's calculating to FICO is that she has all of these past due installment loans. What's the chances of her getting another installment loan? Pretty slim, right? We have one that's reported the way it should. You see on there it says 09, so that is a coded as a collection, an open collection, and then there you go right there. So that's what's so very important that you make sure that you know how to read these collections and you can tell if they're being reported in error or not. Now here's a few. I'm going to go through these pretty quickly for you. But we have two out of three reported incorrectly. We have four out of four reported incorrectly. We have one out of three reported incorrectly. We have three out of three reported incorrectly. And here's something really interesting. So we have Midland Funding is originally with Bank of America. It's coded as an I-9. And we remember what I-9 means. It means installment. Okay. Then we have the exact same collection company, Midland Funding, is originally with Direct Merchants. It's coded as 09. 09 is open collection. So isn't that interesting that the same collection company would report one in error as if it's an installment loan and one correctly? Why is that? Well, if you look right here, it says info disputed meets FCRA, which means that Midland Funding got caught doing it the wrong way with that one and they just fixed that one. That's exactly why Credit Law Center has to go line item by line item, bureau by bureau by bureau, fixing each line item. They only fix what they get caught doing, guys. That's it. They only fix what they get caught doing. So it's kind of like the oil companies. They get sued a million dollars. They're making three million a day. They don't care. They don't care. Most consumers, most people do not know their rights and don't know what to do about it. So when this happens and they're not cooperating with us, we do sue them. And we have, if you can see right here, we have Equifax. Um, let's see, I think, oh, TransUnion. So this is just some of the examples. And if you see the amount on here, so we have Equifax that was $2,500. This actually went to our consumers. You have to understand that they've been causing damage to the consumers depending on however long their, the error was on the credit report. So that actually goes to them. So if we have to go that far and actually go to court or to fight these guys or go through a settlement, we can and we do, and we're not scared to do it. We don't jack around at all. Um, we have a check here for $3,900, $2,500, $2,000, $4,500. Guys, this goes to the consumer. So if we have to go that far, like I said, we can do it and we do do it. Now, here's an example here. Um, we had a client that was denied on in October 20th. They were at a 598. And by December 5th, they were at a 657. So they were where they needed to be in order to um, close on a home loan. We try to move things very quickly. So we want to go ahead and get them in, in the system. Let's get them cleaned up and let's get them back over to you before they lose interest, if you will, on purchasing a home. All right, and we're not gonna, this, is, this could be for another time. There's also written violations with collection letters and there's also violations with collection calls. So we can do that a different day just to be respectful of your time. Now, a lot of times what happens is people are like, this is all good and everything, but you guys are a law firm, so you have to be expensive. That's not actually true at all. So 
Like I said, we only charge for what we're able to remove from a credit report. As you can see right here, we have our fees. So any collections or repossessions is going to be $65 per bureau. Bankruptcies and foreclosures, $120. Charge-offs charge -offs or judgments is also $65. Any incorrect personal information like wrong addresses, so on and so forth, is $15. And any late payments, which I'll be honest with you, is the hardest thing we have to go up over is $30. So what we do is when we get a client, we take a look at their credit report, we set them up with their credit advisor. The credit advisor takes a look at the credit report. They see what's positive and negative on the credit. And then they're going to let them know, if I get everything removed from your credit report, your total with me will be, let's say, $500. Okay? So they know from the get-go how much it's going to cost. Now, it may be less than that because we don't remember we only charge for what we're able to remove, but it won't be more than that. Okay? Our credit advisors are also um, able to adjust with payment. Let's say we have somebody that their bill, if we get everything removed, would be like $1,200. They can go ahead and adjust that down and give them discounts. We do that all the time. Any uh, military personnel that we're working with, we give them a 40% discount right off the top. Okay. Um, so anyway, so that's how we do that. And they'll let them know everything that we need to do to get it removed. Now, anything... Any invoice that we have or anything that would be $500 or more, if we get everything removed, we do take a retainer fee one week after they sign the contract with us. That goes towards the total bill. That's not an additional fee. So we'll say, okay, your total with us would be $700 if we get everything cleaned up. So I'm going to take a $200 retainer fee one week after you sign the contract with us. And again, that goes towards the total bill. The first three years that Credit Law Center was in business, we did not do that. So we get the majority of everything removed the first round, and then um, our people were excited to go purchase a home, and they would kind of forget about us. So since we've been doing the retainer fee, it's been working out a lot better. It puts a little more skin in the game for the client. Um, it helps them pay off that first invoice. They're excited when they we give them a call and say, hey, we were able to remove 10 items from your credit report. You've already paid $200 towards this invoice, so now you only owe, say, like another 150 So it just kind of keeps the ball rolling, but that's how we do that. You can always get in contact with your credit advisor, too, to find out where your client is in the process. But they also will get a hold of you, too, per round. So each of our rounds are 40 days. And so when we get done with that 40 days, we're like, hey, great news. We let them know what's been, been removed. And then we can get a hold of you and let them know where they're, where they're at. So um, that's how we do that. We have a great website, like I showed you earlier, the, um, our uh, – Credit Law Center website, it has so much valuable information on there. Um, know as much as you can about credit so you can help those clients out. It's really important. The more you can um, help them, the more value you are to them and the more likely they are to refer. So that's always a good thing. Um, and then even our Facebook page has a lot of really fun and good information. We're always there for you. One of the things that Credit Law Center prides ourselves on is partnering with our partners. We want you to be able to close more deals every single month. And, and then just be able to work with clients that's going to refer you like crazy because a lot of these people, when they find out that, you know, they think they have low credit scores or they do have low credit scores, they've been denied everywhere else. And when you take a little bit of time with them to get them on their way, they're so grateful and they will refer you out like crazy. I promise you, we see it all the time. We just this last year, um, we were recognized in the Inc. 5000 as being one of the fastest growing companies in the United States. We have an uh, A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureaus, and we've helped over 30,000 clients um, since we've been in business all over the United States. We can work everywhere um, other than South Carolina and Georgia, and that's just because of their own laws and regulations. So we can help anywhere. So we are definitely there to partner with you. If you have any first-time home buying seminars or you, know, you want to partner together with marketing, anything, let us know. We're there to help you be successful because if you're successful, we're successful. It's very important to us. So I just want to thank you guys for your time. Um, I'm sure you guys probably have some questions. If you want to reach out to your credit analyst that invited you to the webinar, please do. Um, they can answer any questions that you have. And um, if you want to, if you're ever interested in doing a, a webinar with like a first-time home buyer seminar, like I said, or even for your office or anything like that, let us know. Reach out to your uh, credit advisor. They can get that set up and we can um, get that going for you. I really appreciate your guys' time. We look forward to working with you, and I hope everybody has a fantastic day.